So, I guess that'll do it for... <laughs> <laughs> Here, this can be possible cold open. <laughs> that'll do it for blank, and because it's not filled in, that really threw him off. <laughs> I have to, you know, I have to think up a very concise description for the video. That's right. <laughs> don't make fun of me. Never. Also, <laughs> why can I uh, check that? out the links down below uh, of all of my favorite YouTubers that are all worth checking out. So embarrassed. <laughs> uh, that tells you how mentally dedicated I am to my YouTube videos. <laughs> or maybe it's just my age. Anyway. <laughs>
that's a long convoluted story as to why I picked this one up. <laughs> the Carmen McRae installment of the same. Uh, I was wondering series. where that story was going. I thought yeah. I thought you might be about to drop that that person was in the Crusaders, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that, so mm-hmm. I didn't know where that story was going. <laughs> was going to end I, up. I, yeah, I, I go off on tangents <laughs> sometimes. So, uh, for some reason, I like series. I like picking up series and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. And uh, I decided to this one. I'd kind of been thinking about picking up, although. These copies at House of Records were new. They would just come in recently. But uh, I'd uh, taken a look, seen on the shelves and on the racks, Jeff Goldblum's uh, two CD. Actually, he's got three CDs out now. Uh, this was his first one, um, the Capitol Studio Sessions. So I picked this one up, and uh, it has... Let's see. I, I don't know if anybody in particularly... Oh, Sarah Silverman, which I, she's a comedian. I had no idea she was a singer, so she features on a couple songs on here. And Till Broner, I'm not sure who he is. Uh, Haley Reinhardt, who was a finalist on American Idol. So, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting to hear. And also his second album, uh, it's, yeah, Yellow Text on a Light Background. That's good planning. Um, You'll find it. I Shouldn't Be Telling You This is the name of, the, of his sophomore album. And... Uh, Inara George, Sharon Van Etten, and Miley Cyrus appears on a track on here. And Fiona Apple as well. Mm-hmm. So those were... Oh, and Gregory Porter. So yeah, I thought I was very interested to hear how they do in that uh, aspect of music. I mean, Miley Cyrus. Hey, Lady Gaga surprised me with uh, how she can handle jazz. Yeah. So yeah. who knows? So yeah, that was my House of Records haul. Yeah, um, I didn't. I picked up two things at House of Records. It's the start of the day. I had to start. I couldn't go go too crazy to Pace start yourself. off. Um, <laughs> so two things I picked up. Um, one of them is uh, Los Angeles by either Hiroshima or Hiroshima, whichever uh, whichever you prefer. Um, weird story about how i know about this band because they are not popular had you ever heard of them before yeah okay i didn't know because they're not a super popular band um i had found uh, one of their albums mixed in with a ton of just the typical like cheap classical and big band stuff that you normally find um Mm -hmm. just right in the middle um and i was like this looks interesting so i picked it up um and I'd never explored them any further, uh, but this was in the dollar section, so I thought it was uh, something I wanted to try at least. Um, try to give them a, a little, get a little bit more into them, especially because I liked that other album so much. And then uh, my second choice uh, was uh, "At Night Alone" by Mike Posner. Um, Mike Posner is an artist I've really connected with in in weird ways not super consistently um but some of his music just has really connected with me at least his earlier stuff i haven't liked a lot of the stuff he's been doing now um but that was uh, from his earlier albums that was one of the ones i did not have and plus this was uh like a, it had a bunch of bonus tracks and remixes so it was a deluxe edition um as i found out as i was purchasing said al- album um we're pretty sure that this is one that tom had traded into them a little while ago um but hey, I mean, it, 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 great minds think alike, I guess. Yeah. Uh, couldn't help but picking it up. Um, so yeah, those were the two things I picked up uh, at House of Records. Yeah, I, I liked that album for a while. It unfortunately shrunk on me, and uh, yeah, so it seems to happen a lot. I don't know. Anyway, uh, after that, we went to Epic Seconds, which is, as uh, you've heard me talk about them, uh, I, they are the home or the origin point of my Bargain Bag series. This year, uh, they had a. They unfortunately don't have it uh, on the floor right now. Their dollar wall, but uh, yeah, they've got uh, lots of CDs at good prices. And to avoid going on an unnecessarily long tangent, uh, but yeah, I picked up oh six or seven, two, four, four or six, seven titles here at House of Records or Epic Seconds. Excuse me, <laughs> it's late. I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, I thought I'd had all of volumes in the uh, Sony Music Soundtrack for a Century series, but I did not have the Folk, Gospel, and Blues uh, set. It, they're all two CD sets that were made uh, right at, uh, at like 1999, so hence the title Songs for, for the Century. So yeah, and it's got, as, as the title says, uh, uh, lots of folk and gospel and blues. Stuff that, as I was collecting all the other volumes, I really was not into any of either of those, of those genres. But uh, now that my tastes have uh, evolved a bit, I've saw it fit to uh, not only for my int- my growing interest in those genres, but in order to complete the set, you know, 
can't have a volume missing out of the set, can I? Uh, and then uh, another, a, uh, I call these guys bluegrass because they're, they mix bluegrass and jazz. Uh, Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. Uh, I had had this one, I think, a long time ago uh, before I'd really gotten into them. I got rid of this. This is not the same one I got rid of. Uh, then years later, I picked up their first three or four albums. So I saw fit to pick up their 2011 album, Rocket Science. So. And then uh, Cher, Heart of Stone, uh, one of her classic albums. Uh, yes, I bought a two-disc Best of set, uh, actually off of Noah's Discogs, I think, and uh, it actually did not have the singles from this album, so so this is not redundant in, in any way. So. And then a few good things from the uh, $2.5 section, that, that that's their least expensive section now, although except uh, they had a stack of $1 CDs on the, they have a little cart there that they put stuff before they move it to where it goes. Their dollar CDs are not, not out on the floor yet, but they had a stack of them that they had priced, and so I snuck, snuck one off of there. Uh, the Platters, the very best of the Platters, Enchanted. So I think I have a Platters collection, but uh, it's not as lengthy as this one. So great R&B doo-wop stuff. I really like that stuff. And then uh, a few interesting things. Alberta Hunter. I had never heard of her before, but uh, she was, this album was done, I think, in 1980, and she was at the ripe old age of 84 or 85 when she did this album. Uh, blues, an R&B artist. Uh, so, oh, My Handyman Ain't Handy No More is one of the songs on here. I, I, I like the, uh, just the title of that one. And Amtrak Blues is the name of the album, and that's one of the songs on here as well. So, very curious to, uh, I'm always curious with artists that are kind of up there in age to see if they've, you know, Still got it. So. And then uh, coming close to completing my Spider-Man soundtrack CD sets, I've got the the score albums from number one, uh, first two Sam Raimi movies and Amazing Spider-Man. And I also have the... Actually, this was another one that you sent me, I think, was the sound, song soundtrack from Spider-Man 3 mm -hmm. as a gift. You sent me such great gifts. <laughs> and so I picked up, this is the song soundtrack from Spider-Man 1, so I'm only missing the song, so song soundtrack from Spider-Man 2. No, I, I don't have the... Uh, they didn't make a score for Spider-Man 3, and I'm not interested in the score from uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. So so not not counting those. <laughs> I'm one CD away from completing it. And then the last 250 CD I got was uh, the two-disc complete edition of the Tony Bennett's Carnegie Hall concert from... I don't know when. Somewhere, sometime in the 60s. So, uh, yeah, I was very happy to pick this up. Uh, yeah. No scratches on the CD and uh, over 20 tracks on each disc. So, nice and full uh, amount of music for a very good price. So, yeah. that was my Epic Seconds haul. Yes. Uh, Epic Seconds was... Uh, I Epic Seconds is definitely the kind of store that appeals to me the most because I, well, one, I'm going to be on a plane. I didn't want to buy any records, so House of Records, they have a great selection of everything else, but much more limited. Um, they definitely seem to put the vinyl first, um, and so, yeah, I, I didn't get to pick up as much there as I was as I would hope to. Um, but Epic Seconds had a ton of stuff, um, plus they had a bunch of DVDs and stuff, and that's actually most of the stuff I bought. Uh, over there I've got a pile of a couple DVDs that we picked up, including a Star Trek uh, DVD per... We watched it last night, and he's got me hooked. So, um, yeah, so picked up a couple DVDs. So Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, you were successful. Um, picked up something that I had, I had given to him as well. So I, I only picked up two at the store as well. Um, but two things that I was pretty excited to see... Um, the first one is Crooked Shadows by Dashboard Confessional. Um, I was able to see Dashboard Confessional uh, uh, in a co-headlining tour with Andrew McMahon, who is one of my favorite artists. Um, I, I liked Dashboard Confessional, but I didn't know a ton of their music. Um, so I'd slowly been trying to listen through some of their catalog before the concert and kind of continue to do so, because I do like what I've heard. I've just never... I haven't got super deep into it. I think I'm three or four albums deep. So... Um, this one was was one that I felt was worth it uh, to try out, uh, especially because it was like 20, 2018, so a pretty recent album as well. Um, so I wanted to give that one a shot. And then on top of that, uh, the other one that I was actually pretty excited to find because uh, 
it's an album that I hadn't thought about in a while, kind of forgot about, um, but I remember when it came out, I had listened to it. Uh, it's a 2017 album, a uh, collaboration between Lindsey Buckingham and Christine McVie, um, obviously from uh, Fleetwood Mac. Um, it's a, it's, I, from what I remember, it was a really great, uh, catchy pop album, um, and I think that it highlighted a lot of the strength strengths that both of them had um, during the Fleetwood Mac era. So I was very excited to see this um, and excited to listen to it again because it's been a little while since I heard it. Um, so I'll be definitely very excited to give it a listen, um, especially uh, after the recent passing of Christine McVie. Um, glad to add uh, some more of her music because she is absolutely brilliant. Um, some more of her music to my collection. Nice. And after those two stores, oh, we well, didn't really talk about the food. We went, we went to a little restaurant off campus called Rennie's for lunch. Although it, they on Sunday they only do their breakfast their breakfast menu, so I can roll with the punches, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, I had a good lunch. And uh, after House of Records and Epic Seconds, we went to um, Salt and Straw for ice cream. That was that was on their wish list of uh, things to do while they were here. So uh, good ice cream there. I was, uh, according to Alyssa, is one of the best she's ever had, um, and this was her. This was her thank you from us for allowing us to to go to these stores and her just having to stand around and be patient. Uh, that was her. That was her uh, reward for that, her, um, and she happily accepted. <laughs> her her patience uh, continues to impress me. So, thank you, Alyssa. And so yes, uh, so yeah. Within after that, we went to. We were only going to go to one St. Vinny's thrift store in the area, but uh, the uh, book selection was quite impressive to Noah and Alyssa, so they decided to let's go ahead and hit up to, and the books were all 50% off, so can't there's no excuse not to go to a second store, even though the old man was starting to get a little bit tired. But, hey, can, am I going to say no to go to another thrift store uh, and poke through their CD section? Hell no. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm going to conflate the uh, both St. Vinny's stores halls here uh, for you guys. Uh, some silly stuff. Hey, when it's 99 cents a piece, uh, John Denver, John Denver's Greatest Hits Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, I had had a while ago the uh, that two-disc essential John Denver, but got rid of it in a purge. Same old story. <laughs> I've done it a dozen times before. Uh, but yeah, changed my mind, so... So I had to go ahead and pick it up. At least this was a cheap, a cheap uh, reacquisition. <laughs> True, yeah. And then uh, got a couple of soundtrack, well, one soundtrack, uh, Air Force One by Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, of course, Harrison Ford is uh, quite possibly my favorite uh, movie star. And so, and of course, Jerry Goldsmith's scores are excellent. And then this one, it's not really a soundtrack, but um, my sister had the soundtrack from Sleepless, Sleepless in Seattle in the uh, collection that I inherited from her. And then I saw this one, uh, more songs from Sleepless Nights. So it's not music that was in the movie, it's just another collection inspired by the movie. So I figured, hey, make a matching pair out of them, why not? So uh, yeah, Jimmy Durante, Carly Simon, Vic Damone, uh, Clarence Frogman Henry. I really got into him just last year, picked up his thing. And Sinead O'Connor. So yeah, kind of the span the, uh, the ages, I guess you'd say. And this one, I do not know what this sounds like, but she is, uh, if I remember Wikipedia correctly, she's a jazz, primarily a jazz vocalist. Uh, Christina Train is her name. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And this is her debut album, Spilt Milk. So I will be interested to uh, see what that sounds like. And yeah, that was the only... I'm kind of in the middle of, well, another CD purge, as though they ever really stop with me. Uh, so yes, I kind of had to deliberate. I didn't expect to get this much, uh, because, you know, it's like, am I going to still have it a month from now, you know, when I'm getting rid of other CDs? But anyway. He does this every time. When he came and visited us, he goes, I'm not going to buy any records. And then ended up having a huge box full of just vinyl. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, 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 I could have seen through that lie pretty, pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. So what can you do? Uh, so yeah, I've kind of, I, I try, I, put a little more thought than I normally would into each of the things that I bought, and yet still I came home with, you know, 20-some CDs. Uh, Miranda Lambert, her debut album, Kerosene. I got her uh, most recent album, Palomino, which I really enjoyed. It uh, came out last year. I don't remember if it was on my albums of the year list, but it was a favorite of mine, so I picked up uh, her first one. And then the last three are all Indigo Girls. Uh, the 
Swampophilia I got in a uh, bargain bag earlier this year, late last year, but uh, it was a fairly scuffed up edition, and so I decided, you know, this one was still uh, scratch-free, so I picked that, out, that one up, as well as her two, their sub two subsequent albums, Shaming of the Sun and Come On Now Social. So we'll see what those are like. Nice. And that is, that was my St. Vinny's Hall. Yeah, um, I I was able to actually pick up quite a lot. I mean, 99 cents, again, I couldn't, <laughs> uh, there were quite a few. And, and I actually found quite a few things that I was actually very excited about. A couple things that I'd been looking for, um, some things I didn't even know I was looking for. Um, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I could have picked up more, but the concern started to become, how am I going to get these home? Um, so <laughs> had to limit myself at least a little bit. Um, so... Some of the things I picked up uh, was uh, everyone. Everyone's doing it, so why don't we? We yeah. Uh, by the Cranberries, um, I have two of their albums. Honestly, I was very surprised I didn't have this one. I almost didn't pick it up, um, and then realized that that is one of the ones that I was missing. Because um, I mean, one of their most popular, most successful albums. Um, great band, of course. What else could I say? Um, that people already haven't said about uh, the cranberries. Um, so excited to add that to my collection. Then the next thing I picked up um, was a two disc greatest hits of Reba. I have quite a few of her albums, um, but <sighs> from the sitcom with the, the uh, with her name Reba, um, the theme song "I'm a Survivor." It was really my. I mean, that show and that song is my introduction to Reba. Um, and I did not have that on anything. And so I thought, well, this could replace a couple, because I do, I have two of the volumes of her greatest hits. So I was like, this could replace those because this not only has probably most of those songs, but also includes um, the song that I really love. Um, so was excited to see that one. That one was neat. Um, then I picked up, this was, uh, Tom hasn't seen quite a few of these yet, um, but I picked up Honky Tonk Angels, which is uh, Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, and Tammy Wynette. Um, yeah, it was a, that was totally a, a, just a gut instinct. I looked at it and I thought it looked very cool. Um, great set of three artists. And I thought that I would like to try to give it a listen. Uh, that one, I am not a very, um, I'm not, I'm someone that usually wants to hear the music I pick up before I actually purchase it. Um, this one was, I have no clue, but I can't imagine it's that bad. Um, so that was neat. Um, a couple other things. <laughs> Some of these are <laughs> give, uh, have, some of these are very exciting to me, and some of these are going to make Tom laugh. I think he's starting to see one of them. Um, one of them's uh, the Drifters' gold, uh, Golden Hits. I just didn't have any of the Drifters um, and wanted to add one of their uh, CDs to the collection. I saw that one. I didn't realize it was still sealed. Yeah, it's still nice. sealed, too. Um, so uh, a no-brainer to try to pick up. Uh, and then, let's see... Doom Day. My uh, Drifter CD here. Yeah, it's not as not <laughs> it's not sealed. I'll say. Um, <laughs> Doom Day's my best deal. Um, I not a huge best deal fan, but I, there's a couple songs on here that I do really like. Uh, wanted to at least give it another shot and listen to it. And um, again, for a dollar, had to pick it up. Uh, and then getting into some of the last ones. So uh, one of them that I was very excited to see uh, is I think the debut and self-titled by Mike Snow. Um, I don't have any clue how I found this artist. Uh, when I was first starting to get into a place where I was discovering music, not just listening to whatever everyone else put on for me, uh, a couple songs by this band were some of the first things that I found. Um, and so I haven't been able to pick up any other stuff. I don't know if it's super common or if I've just never seen it. Um, but yeah, I was I was very excited to see this one because um, it was not something I was expecting. Um, uh, on this album specifically, I know the song Animal, but I'm looking forward to trying to get more into them now that I'm at a place where I'm not just trying to grab every possible song I hear. Um, I'm, I'm excited to dive deeper into them. Uh, and then this one especially I was very excited for. Um, a band called the Apache Relay. Um, uh, album is American Nomad. Uh, they, they have, I discovered them because a lot of their songs soundtracked a movie that Alyssa actually really liked. She introduced me to it and the whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, this is great music. I really love it. Um, and so I have looked for this CD 
actively for many years and never found it. And I'm definitely the type oh, to. I love the cover. <laughs> yeah, it's great. They're they're very good. Um, yeah, I, I'm very excited. It's a it's a it's a very great uh, album. Power Hungry Animals is a, a fantastic song. Um, but yeah, I, this was one that I've actively looked for. I'm sure I could have got it for five bucks on Discogs, but where's the fun in that? Um, <laughs> it, way more fun to find it at St. Vinny's than the last one. <laughs> and for 99 cents. Right, I know. I was stoked. And so the last one, I was talking to Tom about Taylor Hicks, the uh, American Idol uh, contestant. And, <laughs> and I was talking about how his first album was such an important album to me. It was probably one of the first albums that I actually personally picked up myself, paid for one of the first CDs I got into as a kid. Um, and I found his uh, CD single of Do I Make You Proud and Taking It to the Streets, and I couldn't turn it down. I was so excited. <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> Alyssa always makes fun of me for Taylor Hicks because um, she was saying, because I get so into some of his music because it's such a nostalgic thing for me as well. Um, but these songs are definitely also on that nostalgic kick for me. So uh, this was very cool. Uh, don't usually like CD singles, but for an artist that meant so much to me, I wanted to pick this up. I was very excited about it. Um, but that's all of it. That's that's all that I was able to pick up. Uh, probably a little long-winded explanation of some of them. But uh, yeah, very excited about some of those uh, finds. Nice. So that'll do it for our Eugene CD haul video for 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and... Life's too short to be a music snob.